The Ohinomuri River, usually a shimmering ribbon of blue, transformed into a startling spectacle. Its waters turned a vibrant, almost unnatural shade of orange. This unexpected change sparked immediate concern and curiosity among locals and authorities alike. What could have caused such a drastic alteration to this vital waterway? The river's sudden discoloration was impossible to ignore. The once clear water reflecting the sky and clouds now resembled a flow of liquid rust. This dramatic shift served as a stark visual reminder of the potential for human activities to impact even the most seemingly pristine natural environments. The question on everyone's mind was, what caused this alarming transformation? High above the river, nestled amongst the rolling hills, lies an old mine shaft. This mine, once a bustling centre of activity, now stands as a silent sentinel of a bygone era. The hills, with their lush greenery, seem to guard the secrets of the past, whispering tales of the miners who once toiled here. Long abandoned and forgotten, this relic of the past held a secret, one that would soon reveal itself to the world. The entrance, now covered in thick vegetation, hides the stories of countless workers who spent their days extracting precious minerals. Rusty equipment partially buried in dirt and plants stands as a testament to the passage of time. It was from this mine shaft that the source of the river's discoloration originated. The once clear waters now bear the marks of human intervention, a stark reminder of the environmental impact of mining. The orange-tinted water flows downstream, contrasting sharply with the pristine sections of the river. The mine, once a hub of activity and industry, now stood silent, its entrance concealed by time and encroaching vegetation. The forest has reclaimed much of the site, with bushes and trees growing over the old structures. The silence is almost eerie, a stark contrast to the noise and bustle that once filled the air. Unseen and forgotten, the mine shaft held within its depths a legacy of mineral extraction. The dark, damp walls are lined with mineral deposits, remnants of the once thriving industry. Abandoned tunnels stretch into the darkness, filled with old tools and equipment, now covered in dust and rust. Years of mining operations had left behind residues and deposits, hidden from view but not inert. These remnants, though out of sight, continued to interact with the environment, slowly leaching into the surrounding soil and water. The build-up on the walls tells a story of relentless extraction and the enduring impact of human activity. Recent heavy rains had dislodged these remnants, flushing them from their subterranean resting place and into the unsuspecting river below. The torrents of water carried sediments and residues, mixing them with the river's flow. The once hidden pollutants now traveled downstream, affecting the ecosystem and communities that relied on the river's waters. The legacy of the mine, long forgotten, had resurfaced, reminding us of the lasting consequences of our actions. The sediment, laden with minerals and unknown substances, traveled from the mine shaft through a channel. This channel, a relic of the mining era, carried the legacy of human activity, transporting not just water, but a cocktail of elements that had been unearthed and exposed to the environment. This channel, possibly dug by hand or carved by the elements over time, acted as a conduit, funneling the contaminated water downhill. Over the years, it had become a permanent fixture in the landscape, a silent witness to the passage of time and the ongoing impact of mining activities. The sediment-rich water then poured into the Ohainamuri River, instantly changing its color. The once clear waters of the river turned a murky orange, a stark visual indicator of the pollution that had traveled from the mine. As the contaminated water flowed, it carried with it the remnants of the mine's past. Bits of debris, particles of minerals and other remnants of mining activity were all swept along in the current, spreading the impact far and wide. Iron, a common component in mine drainage, was likely responsible for the vibrant orange hue. This iron, oxidizing upon exposure to air and water, created a rust-colored tint that was unmistakable. The water's journey was a visible reminder of the interconnectedness of our environment. Each drop of water, each particle of sediment, played a role in the larger ecosystem, illustrating how actions in one area could ripple outwards, affecting distant places. What happens upstream, even at a seemingly insignificant source, can have far-reaching consequences downstream. 
The pollution from the mine shaft was a clear example of this, showing how interconnected and delicate our natural systems truly are. While the orange colour was the most immediately apparent effect, it was just the tip of the iceberg. There was a deeper concern that went beyond the visible discoloration of the water. The sediment likely carried heavy metals, dangerous substances that can pose serious health risks. These metals can settle at the bottom of the river, creating a toxic environment. These heavy metals, often found in mining waste, could contaminate the river water, making it unsafe for drinking, swimming or even contact. Heavy metals like arsenic, lead and mercury are particularly concerning. These metals are invisible to the naked eye, making their presence even more insidious. They can easily go undetected without proper testing. These toxins can accumulate in the environment and in living organisms, causing a range of health problems. Fish and other aquatic life can absorb these metals, which then move up the food chain. Exposure to heavy metals can lead to developmental issues, organ damage and even cancer. Long-term exposure can have devastating effects on human health. The potential for these harmful substances to be present in the river water was a serious cause for concern. Communities living near the river are particularly vulnerable and must be vigilant. Efforts to mitigate the contamination include installing water filtration systems and educating the public on the dangers of heavy metals. It's a collective effort to ensure the safety of the environment and public health. Immediately after the river's discoloration, authorities launched an investigation. They needed to determine the extent of the contamination and its potential impact on the environment and human health. Teams were dispatched to collect water samples both upstream and downstream from the affected area. Scientists carefully gathered water samples, ensuring their accuracy and integrity. These samples were then rushed to laboratories for analysis. The results of these tests would reveal the types and concentrations of contaminants present in the river, providing crucial information for assessing the risk to human health and the environment. With the investigation underway, authorities issued a public health advisory as a precaution they strongly urged residents to avoid all contact with the river water. Swimming, fishing and any other recreational activities in the affected area were strictly prohibited until further notice. The health and safety of the community were paramount. Until the extent of the contamination was fully understood and the risks assessed, it was crucial to err on the side of caution. The public was urged to heed these warnings and to stay informed about the situation through official channels. While the situation was serious, there was some hope. The Ohinomuri River, like many natural systems, possesses a remarkable ability to cleanse itself. The flowing water would naturally dilute the contaminants over time, gradually reducing their concentration. Each passing day, with the help of rainfall and natural water flow, the river would slowly begin to heal. The contaminants, though persistent, would eventually be flushed out to sea, their impact lessened by the vastness of the ocean. Guardians of the water monitoring the situation. Authorities remained vigilant, closely monitoring the situation. Regular water samples were collected and analyzed to track the levels of contaminants over time. The data collected would inform their decisions about when it would be safe to lift the restrictions and allow the public to once again enjoy the river. The Ohinomuri River's recovery was a testament to the resilience of nature. It was also a reminder of the importance of vigilance, swift action and responsible environmental stewardship. echoes of the past mining's lasting legacy. This incident served as a stark reminder of the lasting legacy of mining activities. While mining can bring economic benefits, it also has the potential for long-term environmental consequences. Abandoned mines, like the one that contributed to the Ohainamuri River's discoloration, can pose hidden threats to surrounding ecosystems. This event highlighted the need for responsible mine closure and rehabilitation practices. Ensuring that mines are properly sealed and that any potential contaminants are contained is essential for protecting both human health and the environment. Lessons learned preventing future disasters. 
The discoloration of the Ohinomuri River served as a valuable, albeit unfortunate, learning experience. It underscored the importance of understanding the potential environmental impacts of past industrial activities and the need for proactive measures to mitigate future risks. This incident sparked important conversations about responsible resource management, environmental regulations and the need for ongoing monitoring of potential hazards. It highlighted the importance of learning from past mistakes to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Stay informed, stay safe resources for the public. The authorities encouraged the public to stay informed about the situation through official channels. Local news outlets, government websites and community bulletins provided regular updates on the investigation, water quality test results and any changes to public health advisories. By staying informed, residents could make responsible decisions to protect them.